Well, it's been a few days. The paint's uh, here, and I have the, the hole setting up right now, and I've added, uh, put the hatches in, put on the uh, the bow eye for uh, my line cord, and uh, just generally been work <laughs> working, not necessarily night and day, but uh, on the plan drawings and text uh, message. And hopefully you'll see a little bit different in this video. I up the bit rate from 15 frames a second to 30 frames a second. And I'm trying to decide now whether or not to spend some money and buy a new, uh, a new camera, a new high definition camera, and uh, uh, make everything a little wider and maybe a little higher uh, resolution. But then uh, that would be like standing up next to the boat saying, oh, there's a flaw. So maybe this old standard definition stuff is uh, going to work. So what, what I'm now doing now is uh, I have the seat plate. I, when I put in the uh, seat pyramid in the middle there, it's flat, you know, flat with the hull. But uh, when you set in, a, in the seat, especially a seat like that, you want to you want to lean back a little bit. And when you lean back, you want the bottom of the seat to press up against the the, the lower part of your thighs to give them support uh, while you have your feet out uh, manipulating the the pedals. And so uh, I was debating whether or not what kind of pad I was going to do. So I decided to break out the cardboard and uh, make a little uh, pyramid and I wanted an inch and a half of height on the leading edge and what did I do with it? I put it away. Uh, it's an inch and a half here measured uh, from this edge down and so I have my little uh, I'm gonna flip it around here. pyramid that I'll be able to put in and then I'll put in some sort of uh, block or something in the back and behind here so when the screws uh, tighten down on it and hold it in place, it's not going to try to crush it. But I think I'm going to be surprised by how strong this is going to be because I think I'm going to put a layer of, of I've got all that excess glass cloth and when we did the hull, then I'm going to put a layer on the outside and a layer on the inside and use the uh, some of the uh, leftover uh, four mil ply I had as a uh, uh, um, beam, you know, a separator like you would have in a, in a beam. I think it'll be plenty strong enough and may not have to do anything in behind. So let me go ahead and now that I've got this out, I can go ahead and clip the, the corner seams here. And then now I have a, a flat plate I can lay out on my piece of wood and then draw the outline of these things and then uh, you know, make the cuts along here for each of the pieces. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll come back when I have it all ready to uh, uh, assemble. I don't know if I wire it together while it glues up or um, uh, tape it and then um, glass the outside and then flip it over and do the inside. So we'll see when I come back. If you remember me in earlier videos saying, you know, keep all your pieces around, well, this was that part that I was going to use earlier for my seat when I went to a different design. but these end pieces are perfect for my uh, <laughs> for I can use. So I got two of those and then the front piece I can cut out of this part. So you can't find your handsome. Okay now I'm putting in the, uh, the wires to hold this little rascal together and again I can't stress enough to bevel, bevel these little inside edges that meet. It makes it so much easier to get the uh, pieces in position and they just they want to stay there. If you keep the hard edges they're kind of jump all over each other but if they got little 45s they tend to, to set still so uh, do a little more pounding and pushing around but basically I've got my little platform and the seat will set on top of that and then it'll screw down so then I can move it front to rear on the, on the boat. So now I'm going to mix up some gel magic just a little bit just to jump stitch the inside. I can do that with a stick. I don't need to waste a nozzle on that. So I'll do that tonight and then tomorrow I'll come out and, and uh, wet and you know, round it over and wet the edges and then uh, put on a layer of glass and wet that out trim it up to the next day and then flip it over and do the inside with another layer of glass the next day. So we'll come back when that uh, process is in. I've got all the pieces in, the hatch covers, uh, the, the little seat pyramid that I'm building now 
Uh, I haven't finished yet, and, but it's probably about, about a pound, maybe even that much, maybe half a pound. It doesn't weigh much at all. So I've got it up on the scale. Let me go check and see what it is. I'm not called out. Uh, 40. Forty-seven pounds. So I'm pretty happy with that. But just to, in case any but you people from Missouri, you need to be shown. Yep. I don't want to want to keep this running, so you can see there. Okay, it's forty-seven pounds. So, I'm happy. With a 14 foot boat, with a 34 inch beam, um, I'm pretty happy with the weight. Uh, if you had been made out of uh, uh, 6 mil as opposed to the 4 mil, it uh, would have weighed quite a bit more. Probably if I would have stopped the fiberglass down here, and just paint it the rest of the way up, you could have saved another three or four pounds there too. So, uh, And you could have made your air tank smaller. The, I wouldn't go any smaller on the bow one, but the stern air tank, uh, stir, uh, air tank storage tank could have been smaller too, but it's displacing hard, you know, air. It doesn't, you know, there's not that much uh, weight in the uh, four mil plywood used to make it. Uh, but then if you have just regular tanks and you keep the hatches out, you don't need them, you can save another pound or two that way too. So uh, I'm quite happy. And uh, let me set her down and we'll uh, show you some other stuff that I've done. When I mounted the hatch, I had, had it upside down and I had some, uh, I don't know, some silicone-based uh, RTV you know, to seal it. So you can put a big bead up around it. I would have shown that, but I had to the tube I had left over from all my other boats uh, <laughs> the only place I could find anything that hadn't turned on me or gotten hard was I had to cut it open in this uh, white uh, cylinder and dig out the goo from the inside and then I was able to get enough to smear on the inside of the rim where the you have the, uh, the flat part where the screws go through and then you have the the little part that goes inside the cutout well you fill in that, that uh, uh, that area right here with the uh, silicone and then you push it down. Now one of the things you want to make certain of, make sure certain of whatever, that when you push it in that uh, you know your surface, you might have checked it, checked it earlier with a, uh, a nice uh, you know the end of your rafter square or uh, level or whatever make sure it's flat all the way around because when you push this in uh, you want to, to set it down, press it to where uh, if you've got enough under there, you might get a little bead out from the outside to where it's pressed in place. And then put in a couple pilot screws to hold it lined up on its holes if you use the uh, self-centering uh, drill bit to put in all the rest of the holes. And then screw in the screws, but not tight. Just, just bring them down to where they're snug on the hatch. You don't want to compress it. You want the, the RTV, the sealer in behind to harden up first before you come back and screw them down because if, if, if there's a slight wobble in them and you screw this thing down and the RTV sets that way and it's semi-glued to the thing, then when you try to, it may, you know, you may have a difficulty getting it out <laughs> and my hands are just slicker and it'll come. Let me go get uh, some sandpaper and sand my fingers that they're too slick to pull off the hatch. <laughs> it's nice to, I guess, just to safe crack it in me. Sand off your fingertips, but you also, this is like 150. Take some really fine 150, 120 or something like that. And these little ridges in the center here, the lifting part, just take your sandpaper and rough them up a little bit. So then you're going to be able to grab this thing and lift it out. Otherwise, it's a nightmare if it's wet and your hands are cold or whatever. You, and you want to get to whatever's inside here, it can be quite frustrating. So, uh, duck, Chuck at Duckworks saying, you know, he 
usually shows uh, to put a, like a wooden handle on these things. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to, to do something to where you're not having something you can cut yourself on or bang yourself on or whatever. Uh, to, uh, but uh, it does come off and then you hear that snap when they snap close. And now she's watertight and then she comes off. But like I was saying, you want to put the RTV in, set it down in place, put a little bit of firm pressure on it, uh, and some pilot screws, you know, all the screws, but just take them in to where they're snug and they're not really compressing anything. And then after it's cured that night, or the next day, or two days, or whatever, depending on the temperature, uh, then go ahead and just screw them down. But you, they don't have to be, you know, 20 pounds of torque on them. Just screw them down so they're snug. That's enough. You don't want to distort the frame. You want to be able to twist this and pull that out easily. So, and the boat really can't be finished until you've added your uh, equipped by Duckworks uh, sticker. I figure that's a nice place up here out of the way so it's not going to get damaged. But I know now that I've got my uh, official symbol, uh, we're ready to go pretty soon. The one thing I noticed when I had it up on the, uh, on the scales where the placement, when I first had it, I had it back here where I thought it was going to be, you know, the balance point here. But now that the hatch, that everything is finished, it seemed to have shifted farther forward. So it makes me feel a little bit better so that when I, I haven't put the pad in yet, it's, I got some easy fillet, uh, fair in the insert, fillet in the insides of my little uh, center seat compartment. Now I got to flip it over and then put a layer of uh, glass cloth on the top of it and uh, paint it, but I may paint it after, you know, when it warms up. It doesn't need to be painted to do the, the testing in the lake. But I found that when I did get it balanced, it moved forward. So I think uh, it seems to be a little more nose heavy than what I thought. So I will be able to move my seat. I'll have good range when I got the other 14 pounds of battery and motor on the electric paddle hanging off the transit there. So, uh, and then I had to, my friend Bob Ellis that drew up all the uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the clamps, how to do the clamps. He dropped by him and his son and a friend uh, came down and uh, you know John, or, uh, Bob lives up in Alaska and so he made a clamp for me uh, out of oak and <laughs> got my name on it. <laughs> and I want to thank you, Bob, for doing this and uh, coming by and visiting. But um, uh, he also did the, the one on the finger joints, uh, assembled all of that. So if I get around to ever doing a book, I'll have Bob do all the illustrations, illustrations in it. But uh, I just wanted to get that on there that the balance point is going to be different. But uh, I'm still waiting for Joe. He should be finished any day now having the uh, prototype. Uh, the motor is going to be a standard kayak short shaft motor. but. Uh, he has to make a longer control unit because there will be a control unit depending on whether you're left-handed or right and I'm left-handed so I'm going to mount the control unit uh, I'm going to put on probably glue on a piece of that uh, the velcro some of the velcro has a sticky back on it so I'll try that and put that over there with the controls which will have the knob and the little safety pin and then once I get an idea where the seat is then I can go ahead and put in my pedals that I got from Chuck so they'll come around in another video I have the little uh, seat pyramid made that will go underneath the base. Uh, I did go ahead and fill up the inside. Uh, you can probably, uh, with a good, uh, a good uh, jump stitching, smooth jump stitching and sanding down uh, after it's cured, put in a layer of uh, glass on the inside and then one on the outside and that should probably be enough. But I did add a backing block here under the front screws and then one under the back screws just to get a little more stiffness. And, uh, and it's got a coat of uh, fiberglass cloth on the outside, molded, molded in. And so now I'm going to uh, put some uh, scrap in behind and uh, put the base, the seat base for the uh, tempera seat I'm using. Uh, because I like this one because it's removable and the base stays in the hull and with stainless fitting nothing will ever rust on the on the seat but i wanted to like i said before i wanted to get that that angle 
back so I would get uh, support from my thighs on the back side when I've got the, uh, the pedals in. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and put in a couple little uh, just a little couple blocks of wood on the back to hold th these two together and then mount the seat and then do some preliminary uh, balancing on that. So we'll, we'll come back to that. I haven't got the motor yet and that's the thing I'm really waiting for is a motor and battery pack to get the real accurate uh, balance but I think I can cheat a little bit and get a good idea for a test position to put the seat in so when I go to the lake and I set in it I don't fall out. I have the seat mounted on its base which is screwed to our new little tilting platform sitting on the original platform and depending on how high you want to set in the boat, let me get my tape measure quickly which it's going to be about eight inches from the bottom and, that, and that's a comfortable height I was just measuring my uh, Winona encounter in the and the, it, it seats flat and it's eight inches uh, from the bottom of, of its hull and I spent two weeks two and a half weeks on the Missouri River paddling down that with that so I know I can you know it's comfortable so it's a good height I don't think it's too high to make it wibbly uh, no more so than say a canoe and a, a canoe seat uh, probably in this hull a nine nine inch high nine and a half would, would work fine um, but this is this is going to be fine uh, they got the uh, the rudders. These are the uh, the rudders I got from Chuck down at Duckworks, and that's why it's with the end of hatches. So that's why it's Duck Duckworks powered. I've got a piece of hard foam sitting underneath the keel to keep protect the paint, and it's sitting on another set of boards to lift it off the hull. So now I have have it balanced with everything but the motor and battery for the electric paddle. I got the seat, pads, you know, uh, pyramid underneath, the hatches, the footrests, uh, rudder controls in there. And it comes in at uh, uh, 6 foot uh, 2 inches, 70, 74 inches from the end, and I had that measured wrong on my piece of paper, so I need to go change that. But now that I know where the uh, absolute balance of the hull is, now I can go back to doing a preliminary uh, with the uh, uh, motor and um, the battery pack and I may have to make some changes on, on that. We'll see how that goes but now I know static boat balance is right here. Uh, it should be the same in the water but uh, I won't know until I test it. Well I rebalanced the boat on the cords on this uh, center line that I balance point that I found and it's about six foot, I got about 12 foot uh, six inch water line, uh, six feet four inches forward, six feet two inches aft, I'm assuming from what uh, I'm able to measure here with static, uh, I'm not going to do anything more, uh, I've got an indicator now, I'll put some tape down to mark the position of the seat and then put in a couple temporary screws to hold in place but I'm not going to do any more adjustments until I get the motor and actually uh, put it in in the uh, in the water and I think I see one mod I'm going to see if I can get Joe to make on the battery to motor cable lengthen it up a little bit so uh, this will until we get her in the water this will do it see you guys later